<laughs> Hello there gang, Devere here with another Pass Blast. Playing a little bit of Desert Thunder, released back in 2003. So see, let's see what we get, shall we, setting wise. That's it, not a lot. Control settings, so at least rebindable. You can change uh, them and that's it. One thing to note. See, I'm playing in 1920 by 1080. You will need to edit a config file to get that. It doesn't support modern resolutions. From the selector, it only goes up to 1280 by 10 something. I forget what it is. So you'll need to find where you've installed the game in your Steam folder. Look for a, a file called a folder called System. In there, there's a DTNE. Just edit it with a text file. It's your desired resolution. Nothing too taxing. But slightly annoying. So let's just dive on and play. So I'll just play a bit of mission one for you to see it. HQ, heavy resistance encountered at border. Massive casualties. Our M1A6 remains functional, but we are unsure about the others. Request intel, over. Commander, you're all we've got left. Reinforcements are coming from the north, but you've got to go it alone if we're going to defeat these guys. Terrorist foot soldiers are armed with tank-busting RPGs, and you've got a division of Russian T-72s waiting right ahead. Make your way to the border gates and blast through them using your 120mm smoothbore cannon. Roger that, HQ. We'll get the job done. Over. So that's your basic briefing. And yeah, graphics certainly haven't particularly aged well. It's a... Uh, it is a third-person only arcade tank game. So you've got your main cannon, and you've got a secondary cannon, your machine gun. You find these little areas, secret areas of extra pickups, and you can you'll get different shell types for each gun as you play through. But for the most part, as you'll see see shortly. You'll be pretty much using your main cannon for most things. It's supposed to be in some big battle. And this is why you'll be missing using your main cannon. Your secondary cannon is pretty much useless on outside of anything but the most point blank range of stuff. He was out firing at me. Oh, there he is. The one thing that is quite impressive is the amount of destruction for the age of the game. Pretty much most things are destructible. You can pretty much blow up everything. So that's sort of quite a nice touch for the age of the game. But that's about it. Be careful because there's mines around as well. So you get slightly more powerful shells for your guns and picking things up can be a pain as well sometimes. And of course there are some things hidden in rocks. You gotta pick them up quickly. Or they vanish. I <laughs> like like you need that. Anything you do pick up, because not none of it carries over to the next mission. You can only carry ten of each special shell anyway. As you go through the game, you'll get slightly more exotic enemy types, of course, but again, nothing too particularly outstanding. Oh, see, oh, it's right. I didn't just see the mic. Because that's the fun of third person. Especially when your attention's sort of been dragged away to see if there's any enemies in front of you. You're looking at something else. Because this tank handles. Well, oh, like a tank. The first problem, you can't look behind you. You can't 360 your turret in a tank. <laughs> so that's one issue that's annoying. One of many. It's just how it, the whole thing handles. It's, it's really doesn't feel at all natural. Let's 
see it just basically tries to overwhelm you with everything. Come on, go forward. Try and pick up a few of these bits to stay in the fight for a bit longer. Not I'm particularly invested. Should really be used in more high powered shells. Basically, you want to use your high powered shells for the for the tanks. And then and then the standard shells for the for those sort of foot soldier types. Because they can fire at you from quite a considerable range, the foot soldiers. Which makes it quite interesting, whereas your secondary gun is only any use up at close to point blank range. Ah, he escaped my wrath. Come here. And there's the other issue with third person, of course, it looks like you've got a clear bead on it. And of course you haven't. See there, the way it slid back down the hill, that will cost you a lot. And there's a particularly annoying mission later on where you've got to go through these canyons. But you're at the top of them. And the amount of times you will end up driving off over the edge by mistake. If you're going forward at full speed and you have to come to a halt and then start turning. If you try turning whilst braking, nothing really seems to happen for like a long delay. So it makes it very frustrating. But also might as well known from Notice the audio. It's pretty awful in telling where the enemy's firing at you from. Oh, that was my fault, that was just a bad shot. See, there's explosions all round, I've no idea. You've got the little radar down the bottom to tell you. But as you can see, you almost not, it doesn't scale very well. I say there's something close by. See, me just try to pick that up. You've got to be so fine and on top of it to pick things up. Which was such a tight time limit for things to go missing as well. Really not. Some really bizarre choices. Oh, there we go. That's some secondary ammunition for the secondary gun. But again, for the most part, I found your main primary cannons better. So, yeah, it hasn't aged well in all honesty. Its graphics are pretty pretty awful. The, the gameplay is... And the controls of the tank is just so frustrating. That's a bit of a better shot. Especially the fact that you can't, you can't turn around. It's just a, <laughs> an incredible choice. There's one more left. Let's just potter over here. I don't think we're too far away from the from the end now. You have to keep your eye out for these little sods. Because they can they don't do much damage, but they can rip you to pieces quite quickly. I don't understand why you had to only in a game that's purely arcade tank, why just why limit it to just ten? Or such limited numbers. So the distance he's firing at me from. No chance of hitting him with this. No chance of hitting him with a secondary weapon from that distance, but he can fire at me. So yes, it hasn't hasn't particularly aged well this game in all honesty. As you can see, the AI is not exactly what you'd call challenging anyway. So they'll probably have no problems hitting me. I will have a lot of problems hitting them. Oh, well, I'll just keep going because we're nearly done now. Especially when the tank sort of slips and slides around over hills and dunes and things. Yeah, not everything from the past is brilliant, in all honesty. Oh, this is the, uh, This is the... This is where the game ends, so... It's 
So all in all, really not that great a game, unfortunately. I mean, it's relatively cheap, but that's for the amount of flaws. I mean, you only get the eight missions you saw at the beginning there. Let's look a bit careful here because there's some mines again. The amount of times you'll, because you'll be so looking forward at the enemy that's trying to shoot at you, that you'll end up. Oh, well, come on, really? That missed him. You'll end up. Hitting light there, I was looking to make sure that was clear and hitting the mine there. That's a mine there, there's probably another one behind me. So this is this is the end of this mission. Should we, maybe we should probably conclude our dealings, gang. So the controls are sloppy. And there we go. The action is mostly slow and over overwhelming at one minute and underwhelming at the others. So that was yes, Desert Thunder. HQ, the border gate. Definitely wasn't that great back in 2003. It's certainly not now. There's a, a lot, lot more content out there that's much more interesting. Limited weapon types, limited enemy types. Missions, in fairness, at least are varied. The maps are quite big. And if you want to look around, there's little areas to pick up extra munitions. But that. Even that's a not pointless because if you you can't take it through to the next mission, even though you're supposed to be playing sequentially a sequential campaign, uh, it doesn't support resolu modern resolutions without editing config files. So yes, not one of the better pass blasts, unfortunately. So anyway, gang, thanks for taking the time to watch the video. Hope you found it useful, entertaining in some way. And as ever, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to let me know you're alive. And I shall see you all next time. Bye for now.